Recently, a lot of you have been reaching out to me telling me that this is the year that you're finally going to take the plunge into making your own clothing or get back into a previous practice that you've maybe abandoned of making your own clothing again, which yay, love that for you. And you wanna know what's the best place to get started? Where did I get started? Or how did I learn to do X, Y, Z? So I thought for this video, it'd be fun and beneficial to sit down with you guys for a casual little chat about what motivated me to start sewing my own clothing, where I'm at in my Me Made journey so far, and what my goals are for my handmade wardrobe and for this channel in the year ahead. And if you don't know me at all because you're new around here, hey there friend, I'm Kaylee and welcome to Happy Makes Me. I'm a professional stylist turned home sewist and now I teach incredibly cool people how to make a handmade wardrobe that is creative, sustainable, and empowered. And I suppose the best place to start is at the beginning. So for me, that's actually around 10 years ago when I started my career as a stylist. So I began styling in a retail setting and kind of worked my way up to management status from there. The places that I worked for were actually specialty shops, so I sold bras, not Victoria's Secret, but bras and jeans. That's my background. And if you've ever shopped for either of those, you know that they can be incredibly challenging to fit. So my job was to very quickly build a rapport with my clientele, size up their body shape and style, and find them things that actually fit them properly and made them feel good and confident and comfortable with themselves. So I did that for a long while until one day my husband got a job opportunity opportunity out of state. So in the matter of four weeks, I quit my job. We packed up our whole house and home. We moved to another state with our daughter who had just turned one year old. And a little after that, I found a job styling for a subscription clothing company where I was able to work from home part-time. So that was really great. And I did that for a time, but eventually I started feeling really torn because the ready to wear model no longer aligned with my personal values and what I was hoping to do with my life. So ultimately I ended up quitting that job, not only so that I could take care of my family, but also so that I could focus more on educating makers and other creatives. So at this point you might be thinking, okay Kaylee, so how do you go from styling and selling retail to just making your own clothing overnight? Well, I guess that's what brings me to my me made journey. So I actually grew up in a fairly creative household. My mom would sew a little bit from time to time. She would pull out the machine and lay out things for, you know, our Halloween costumes, party dresses, things like that. So sewing was always Always something that I was interested in and had seen happening it was like that looks fun but it never actually worked out for her to teach me how to do it myself instead of learning on a machine what I did as a kid was I would actually take like my old pajamas clothes that my mom didn't mind me cutting into and I would cut them up and make little clothes for my Barbies and things like that by hand. I got to my teen years where I actually started to attempt to refashion other pieces. But the thing of it was is that I went into it with no plan whatsoever. So I would just kind of start like hacking into these clothes and sewing them and hoping for the best, which surprise, surprise, that was actually not the best plan. I ended up with a lot of garments that were not even wearable. <laughs> and then when I graduated high school, Etsy was starting to become a thing. So I made these little like handmade dolls and I would sell them on Etsy or at craft fairs, nothing wild, but it was fun for the time and it was making me a little bit of money. So because of that, my dad gifted me a sewing machine, which is actually the sewing machine that I still use to this day. So I took this very first sewing machine pulled it out of the box, set myself up for sewing, and immediately broke a needle that flew up into my eye. Luckily, I was wearing my glasses at the time, so I didn't blind myself, but it was enough to scare the bejesus out of me and to like shove my sewing machine to the back of the closet and be like, I don't need this devil machine. Thankfully, I didn't fully let go of it and intermittently would pull it out once every couple of months, do one small project on it, get marginally better, and then put it away again. And that was just my relationship with sewing for years until I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter and I started making little pieces for her. Not clothing, but you know, burp cloth biz, square, <laughs> very simple projects. And just through that repetitive action, I started getting better and better at it. And that's what really sparked that joy and my love for sewing clicked for me. The unfortunate problem with that was once my daughter got old enough so that my baby wasn't a baby anymore, didn't want to keep making these baby things. So I started feeling really disheartened and really sad because I had just started falling in love with this craft and now I didn't know what to do with it. So I was feeling super bummed out. But then as luck should have it, one day I was just scrolling on Instagram, minding my own business. And then I came across somebody who was sharing a dress that she had made using vintage bed sheets and I was just like oh my gosh I could sew 
my own clothing. And that's when my handmade wardrobe journey really began. So for me personally, I actually got started with a sewing book and that was the Tilly and the Buttons book, Love It First Stitch. One of the reasons why it didn't work so well for me though was because I wasn't a huge fan of all of the patterns included and the way that books are usually set up is that you kind of build off of the skills that you learn from one project to the next. So for me, once I got to the next project, I was like, I don't really want to make that thing, but I do want to learn this skill, so now what do I do? And here's the thing, when you're kind of in that now what do I do phase, that's typically where you end up quitting or giving up altogether. So that's why I recommend learning from an actual person, preferably in a class setting, because that way you have a little bit more power and control over your progress, as well as an expert to help guide you into what you can do next. But to be fair to that book, I do still have the one garment that I made from it. And after I made those, I, like a lot of people, was super pumped about my new acquired sewing skills and I wanted to share about it. So I went to Instagram shared about this new hobby that I had discovered and quickly fell into the handmade community which is so beautiful and glorious and from there that actually really opened me up to a lot of indie pattern designers and that's what encouraged me to continue on with my practice do you know what I have a little bit of extra time before my husband and kids get back home I was gonna take you down to the sewing basement so I could work on something down there but the lighting is so gorgeous in here I think I'm gonna have a quiet coffee moment and do some couch crafts do some knitting. So that would actually be my next tip if you're just learning how to make your own clothing is utilize indie designers over big four or big brand designers. Not that there's anything wrong with going with bigger brand, there just tends to be a lot more hand holding offered so that you are better set up for success as you move along. A couple of my favorites are Helen's Closet Patterns and Seamwork for sewing patterns. I just think they both do such an excellent job breaking down the steps and making the construction of their garments approachable even for absolute beginners. So after I had a couple of simple but wearable pieces under my belt, that's when I decided to just dive all in with making my own wardrobe. I got interested in finally learning how to knit. I took a class at my local library. You know, I really started getting into reading blog posts, listening to podcasts. I went all in on watching YouTube tutorials and gathering all kinds of tips and tricks from other makers on Instagram. So that would be another tip that I would highly, highly, highly recommend is utilizing all of the free resources that you have at your disposal, especially when you are just starting out in your journey and you're maybe not quite sure if this is the craft for you. So if you are still wondering if making your own clothing is for you, definitely give it a try because it can change your life and the way that you approach clothing in ways that you have never even expected which I know sounds really heavy but like stay with me here so I came to making my own wardrobe as a creative outlet and as a form of self-care I wasn't expecting was the way that it would make my wardrobe and my lifestyle more sustainable and that it would change the way that I view and approach my body I went from being a stylist who was able to sell 200 pieces from my personal wardrobe without it even making a dent to a proud outfit repeater and slow fashion in enthusiast. That's due entirely to my handmade practice. And if I can get a little bit vulnerable here, since I have two kids, my stomach is very doughy. My boobs are flat from nursing. I have stretch marks and all kinds of cellulite in new places that I've never experienced them before. I've also never been kinder to myself. I've also never appreciated my body more and I've never been more comfortable or confident or had more fun dressing my body up in clothing that makes me feel good about myself. And that's not to say that every single piece that I've made is a banger and that I've never felt self-conscious in my clothing, that I haven't felt like a failure when a project hasn't worked out. That absolutely still happens, but I no longer feel self-conscious with the same intensity or the same frequency that I did when I was shopping ready to wear. And that brings me to why I started this channel. As I started gaining experience and confidence as a maker, I really felt compelled to bring my world as a stylist and as a creative together. Like a lot of people, I started this channel during the pandemic as mostly a way to document the things that I was making and kind of have a personal wardrobe journey, but also as a way to help invite others into the meme-made tribe. But pretty soon after I started this channel, I found out I was pregnant with baby number two. And as you can imagine, all of my time and energy then went to that as opposed to 
working on videos. But now that the dust has settled, so to speak, and we have a little bit more of a routine, I'm just feeling ready and more motivated than ever to get back to my original mission, which is to help other creatives make a handmade wardrobe that is creative, sustainable, and empowered no matter where you're at on your journey. But of course, with that said, it's incredibly important to me that I'm making videos that are helpful to you and that you actually enjoy seeing. So if you could do me a huge favor, I would really appreciate it if you could share your thoughts below in the comments on what you would like to see. What about this sounds good to you? What doesn't sound good? What you want more of? And while you're down there, if you could please just light up that little like button because not only do those small actions help to support my channel and help me keep making videos like this, but it also gives me a better idea of what resonates with you guys. So thank you so, so much in advance for doing that. And that brings me to my goals for this channel and for the year ahead. So I mentioned in a previous video that one thing that I'm really looking forward to in my personal practice is to sew one thing that scares me. And I think this year it's gonna be jeans. Another thing that I'm prioritizing in my personal wardrobe this year is dopamine dressing or put simply wearing things that make me feel more joyful, more empowered. For example, I have this idea for like a really awesome rock and roll jumpsuit that would just make going to the grocery store a lot more fun. And as far as this channel goes, I would like to start digging more into videos like this. Not just sharing the things that I'm making, although that will obviously still be a part of it, but also serving you guys better in the form of tutorials, tips, tricks, motivation, and education. Like I did in this video where I share my tried and tested tips to help fit sewing into your hectic schedule so you can take it from a casual hobby to a dedicated daily habit. I'll see you guys over there. I love you and appreciate you so much for watching. And until next time, happy making. Bye guys.